Okay, chapter 12 is the summary of chapters 10 and 11, and then we add the other punctuation that we haven't discussed in chapter 12. So chapter 10 focused specifically on the uses of the comma, and chapter 11 focused specifically on the uh, uses of the, uh, the colon and uh, other practical uses of punctuation marks. Uh, so basically a period ends a complete thought, uh, a comma provides a pause for the most part, and then semicolons uh, basically divide uh, compound sentences uh, by joining them with a, uh, a conjunctive adverb, uh, and then a comma follows that, of course, and then another situation would be if you have two complete thoughts and a semicolon would divide the two independent clauses not joined by a coordinating conjunction. Now we're going to focus more on quotation marks and how the punctuation marks uh, are applicable as to whether they should appear within or outside of the, uh, the quotation marks. First, we're going to look at the post-test. And the very first question is, would you please let me know whether you think my idea has merit? Where do you place any type of punctuation mark? And today, I submit to you that that is not a question. It is an indirect question, but indirect questions don't end with question marks. They end more specifically with a period because they're probably more of a statement than they are really a question, but they are technically an indirect question. Uh, so here, think about this from this perspective. Would you please let me know whether you think my idea has uh, merit? More of Yes, this particular one is indirect. So it ends with a period and not a question mark. Uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, so I'll just go ahead and put that in there as a period. And then, wow, what a fun event. Exclamatory. We need to provide uh, an exclamation point to show the emotion related to this particular statement. Now, there are some exclamatory types of remarks that are a little bit more subdued. One of those is, Oh, I didn't know that she had already arrived. So, oh is kind of almost uh, a little bit hesitant, but it's almost a filler. So instead of the word oh receiving an exclamation point, since it's a smaller uh, dose of emotion, use a comma instead after your o's. Wow is always exclamatory. Then number three, three industries, and look what they did here. They inserted a dash. What a dash is, is uh, when if you're inserting it in a word processing package, whether it be WordPerfect or Word uh, or most other packages for sure, you type two hyphens and they appear like this. And then you don't space like you have one word right before the uh, hyphen and then you have a word immediately after the hyphen. It creates one long dash. That's called an M dash. It's E-M D-A-S-H. And uh, the purpose of a dash is really to emphasize something. Now, a dash really could uh, be used, you could probably use commas uh, to in place of dashes, but it becomes really difficult if you have items in a series uh, that's within that particular area that are separated with internal commas already. So that's what makes it a little bit frustrating and, and it forces you to reread it. So they recommend, the author recommends using a dash to offset items in a series that have internal commas. So that's exactly what they did here. Three industries, and notice that the dash is used instead of the colon because this is not an independent clause. If it were an independent clause, then a colon would probably, three of the falling industries is what that's meaning. Then you could put a colon. Uh, but it's not an independent clause, and that's why I'm not going to use that co uh, colon. I'm going to use a dash instead. Um, or I could use parentheses, uh, but uh, parentheses de-emphasize, whereas dashes emphasize. So here we have a dash, and then we have internal commas to separate these items in a series, uh, construction, transportation, and uh, computer systems design. So... Uh, <coughs> There's your three items, and then we have another dash right here, and this is a verb. Industry.
industries is your subject and are uh, experiencing is your verb phrase. So it completes the independent clause after the dashed information. Yes, I could use a parenthesis to go there. Uh, so either a parenthesis or a dash would be really the most appropriate in these two examples. I could have used commas, but that would be frustrating because we already have internal commas. So do you see how the dash or the parentheses really makes that stand out a little bit more since we do have internal commas? Shake head yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next one is please invite Grace Hill, Ph.D., and Dr. Uh, Judy uh, Francini. Okay, we end with a sentence. Uh, so it's just a period, it's a, a statement, a command. Please invite uh, Grace Hill. And the degrees are offset with commas. So we're going to insert a comma after Hill. And then uh, internally for degrees, you do not have, uh, you don't use punctuation marks like periods uh, to divide the bachelors of the arts or masters of the arts or whatever. It's just BA or MA. So, uh, or a doctor of doctorate of philosophy. So it's P, little h, and then capital D, and then just a comma to offset those since they're internal. And doctor period space, Judy Francini period. Next, next one is Dr. Victoria Wims, Miss Jennifer Tahida, and Mr. Zachary Norman have been appointed to the SEC. So we have items in a series at the beginning with. Uh, abbreviations. So doctor receives a period after the doctor and then a space. So it's doctor period space, Victoria Wims, comma, Ms. period space, Jennifer Tejada, comma, space, and Mr. period space, Zachary Norman, have been appointed to the SEC and also government uh, agencies. And there are some exceptions to this rule. Uh, but they're typically not abbreviated with periods. Uh, one of the exceptions I can think of right now is whenever you, uh, for example, Arkansas uh, the, or Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma's abbreviation is OK. We don't type O period K period. It's just OK. It says something for Oklahoma. It shouldn't, right? <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, red act that particular statement. And then, if I said U.S. and the United States of America, it's USA with no periods. Uh, but if I said the U.S. Postal Service, since the United States is being used as a, um, an adjective describing what kind of postal service, it's the United States Postal Service. Since it's used as an adjective, then we would put U period, S period right next to each other. Uh, but if it's used just as a regular noun, then it does not receive the, uh, uh, the periods. Uh, the chapter titled, The uh, Personal Computer, was the best one in the book, The Innovators, How a Group of Hackers, Geniuses, and Greek, Geeks uh, Created the Digital Revolution by Walter Isaacson. Okay, rid of all of my marks since I moved that around a little bit. Okay, anything that um, uh, the chapter titled The Personal Computer, that's not the name of the book. The name of the book would be italicized. The main thing, anything that's main, you italicize it. And then anything that's uh, considered to be a subcategory, usually put uh, quotes around it. So this is a chapter within the main thing, which is a personal computer. So we're going to use quotes on both sides of this. Was the best one in the book. Now I have to move it because I need to look to the right of this. The name of the book is the main thing. So we're going to italicize the innovators and then use a, um, uh, the name of the book continues to be how a group of hackers, comma, geniuses, comma, and geeks created the, uh, the digital revolution by Walter Isaacson. And uh, then it ends with a period. It's just a statement. Okay, number seven, I wonder whether all candidates for the CEO position completed MBA degrees. So um, it's a statement that's wondering, it's indirect question is what it is. CEO does not have any uh, punctuation. Um, 
completed, and then the, all degrees, none of the degrees have punctuation either. Uh, degrees, and then it ends with a uh, period. Okay, did Ted Turner say, now remember from chapter 10, um, if it's a short quotation, use a comma. If it's a long quotation, you use a colon. That's the main difference there. Uh, we're going to modify that just a little bit more today. Uh, did Ted Turner say, you should set goals beyond your reach so you always have something to live for? Okay. As far as um, punctuation inside or outside of quotes, this is a rule. Periods and commas always, always appear inside of quote marks. Okay? That's an always. Um, colons and semicolons always appear outside of the quotation marks. Okay, then finally, question marks and exclamation points may appear inside of quotation marks or they may appear outside of quotation marks as such. So how do I decide? Why did I decide on this one that I'm putting the quotation mark on the, or the question mark on the outside of the quotation mark? I did it specifically because the quote itself is not the question. This is a question. Did Ted Turner say? That's where the question is, so I placed the question mark on the outside of the quotation marks, as in illustrated right there. Okay, then number nine, my ex-boss may uh, reconsider and hire me back. It's just a statement, so it ends with a period. We do put a hyphen to separate X uh, from the word boss. And there's an illustration in the chapter that identifies all the words that should always be hyphenated and then those that should never be hyphenated. And then finally, uh, the uh, 1970s brought back, brought us HBO, semicolon, the first, uh, I'm sorry, this would be commas because these are items in a series, uh, brought us HBO comma, the first floppy disk comma, and the movie Jaws. The movie is italicized because that's the main name of that movie. Anything that's main, italicize it. And then anything that's a subcategory in an article uh, within a major publication, put quotes around it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then this is uh, an apostrophe 70s because they omitted the 1970s. It would be fine for them to put 1970 little s. That would have been perfectly fine uh, for them to have done that. Uh, sometimes we want to omit uh, the, the one nines, and we can do that by using the apostrophe to illustrate the omission of one nine. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the chapter and look at each one of these items individually. Okay, level one. Punctuate statements, commands, and indirect questions. So use a period in those cases. Um, our supervisor asked whether we, will, we could work until 8 p.m. It's an indirect question. End it with a period. Analysts wonder what caused the latest drop in companies' uh, stock price. They wonder it. It's just an indirect question, so end it with a period. Now, polite requests. This one's a little harder. Will you please prepare a spreadsheet showing your calculations? Are they asking a question here? No. Uh, it's a manager that is talking to an employee, and he's being polite. He or she is being polite to the employee, so it's a polite uh, request for the employee to do. Because the employee would not answer from this question. The manager says, will you please prepare a spreadsheet uh, showing your calculations? And the employee says, thank you for asking, but no thank you. That's not a response to that. So do not put a question mark at the end of it because it's not a question. It's a polite command. 
end it with a period. Now you could restructure that if you wanted to be a little bit more clear so that you know that it ends with a period. You can get rid of the will you please and just say, please prepare, as they illustrated right here, please prepare a spreadsheet showing your calculations. Now we know that that imperative command ends with a period, without a doubt. Okay, uh, to punctuate abbreviations and initials, um, lowercase abbreviations like AM, PM, miscellaneous, um, that is for IE, uh, remember EG, E period, G period, the way that you can remember when to use EG is when it means for egg example, EG, and then E period, G period, and then space once after that, uh, yard, etc., which you don't, you really shouldn't use, in business writing anyway, it should be and so forth, or list everything that you want to include uh, because when you start saying and so forth or etc., you're basically saying I don't want to go to the trouble to list all the other alternatives. Uh, foot and inch, all of those uh, end with periods, those are the structure of the abbreviations, not something that we really have much of a problem with, by the way. Uh, the exceptions is miles per hour, is uh, does not have any... Uh, uh, punctuation or miles per gallon or rotations per minute or millimeters and kilograms. In fact, I'm believing in the metric. They don't even use uh, any periods in the metric system anyway. Uh, some upper and lower case abbreviations like doctor, um, Mr., Ms., and yes, Ms. is appropriate. Never use Miss even if you know the individual is single, always keep a professional, a professional title, um, and to keep it on the same playing ground so it doesn't appear sexist. Uh, because a mister, whether uh, he is uh, married or single, still is referred to as mister. So the same should be for the female who is single or married, should be Ms. And it comes from the French, uh, French uh, uh, derivative there, December. Generally spell those out if you can, but yes, it can be abbreviated and it's DEC period. Esquire is commonly uh, abbreviated rather than spelled out. Number is capitalized with a period and then a space. Boulevard is capitalized with a period and a space. And then, uh, let's see, Saturday and then Incorporated. We use that one quite frequently as INC period. Okay, then the exceptions are your degrees, academic degrees such as Associate in Arts is AA, uh, Bachelors of Science is BS, and uh, Masters of Business Administration is an MBA, and then a Doctorate of Philosophy is capital P, little h, capital D, with no internal periods, and then uh, Doctorate of Education is uh, capital E, little d, capital D. And then uppercase abbreviations, the New York Stock Exchange, um, uh, OU would be uh, capitalized with no internal periods, Department of Justice, the DOJ, and uh, uh, NCIS, uh, if you will. And then, uh, let's see, uh, CEO, RN, um, Dallas Love Field, DAL or OKC for the Oklahoma City Airport. Um, Orlando Airports, MCO, Mickey Mouse and Company, that's what it originally stood for. Um, they were very creative there. And then NCAA, CFO for Chief Financial I, uh, Officer, CPA, um, the New York Stock Exchange symbol for Harley Davidson's HOG, H O G in all caps. Uh, if it's um, uh, being offered on the uh, Stock Exchange for the first time, it's an IPO in all caps. Global Positioning System, GPS, is all caps. Okay, geographical locations, USA, all capped with no internal periods. We do have an exception, we'll look at it in a minute. Arkansas is AR, British Columbia is BC. Uh, we often, instead of saying the United Kingdom, we say the UK, so the abbreviation is usually more common than calling it the United Kingdom. Alaska is the AK, and Newfoundland is uh, NL. The exception, if you put uh, United States as an adjective before a noun, then you are able to put 
capital U period, capital S period, space, postal service. Same thing with uh, U.S. currency, U period, S period, space, currency. Okay, initials. How do you punctuate initials? It's H period space, G period space, wells. Commonly, we will put them together without the space between them, and that's really not correct. So uh, you should, as far as initials of individuals, separate the initial, each initial with a space, which really represents a full name, which you would always put a space between a full name and the next name. Okay, let's see, numerals. Let's keep these consistent. Um, if it's monetary, um, using a decimal point to separate the dollars from the cents and a dollar sign, don't put the, use the traditional format in uh, American dollars, US dollars, we put the dollar sign at the beginning and then one three period nine two with no spaces. If you have two items right here, uh, both of those have cents, then make sure that the formats are consistent all the way across. Uh, if, by the way, if we um, had payments of $13, $25, and $39.56 were, so there's our verb, and then da-da-da. Okay. If you have one of the items in a series that has a decimal amount, as we do right here, $0.56, cents, Make them consistent, add the zero, zero to these. But if you didn't have uh, any cents that were available, then you could do it like this. Payments of $13, $25, and $100 without the decimal were collected from our uh, patrons. Just keep those consistent more than anything else. We'll talk more about that in the numbers chapter at the end of the book. and. Uh, we are I basically set up something that doesn't quite agree with the textbook either. But that's a way that you would technically do it. Let's see. Uh, percent. Never use a percent sign in regular business writing unless it's technical writing. Uh, so spell out the word percent and then uh, use a decimal to separate uh, the, the uh, whole percent from the fractional percent. 67.8% of eligible worker, voters voted in Tuesday's election. Okay, uh, uses of the quotation mark. Okay, punctuate direct uh, questions. When will the CEO announce her retirement? There's a real question, so use a question mark to end it. Uh, next one, to punctuate questions added to statements. Look at this didn't we edition. So we had a successful year period is all that's needed. But I go, we had a successful year, didn't we? There's the statement uh, from, that's a, apart from the question. So to separate the two, use a comma to separate the questionable part and then put a question mark with the question that's being asked. He's the best one for the pit position, don't you think? There's a question right there, so use a comma to offset the question and put a question mark there to go along with the question. Okay, to indicate doubt. If you're not sure of a specific year, you can put it in parentheses and add a question mark to it. Facebook finally went public. Uh, was that in 2012? I'm not sure. I'm going to go ahead and put that down. So I'll tell my readers I'm not sure that's the correct year, but I'm not going to go to the trouble looking it up. Yes, we should go to the trouble to look it up and find out for sure. Uh, but if you don't, put a question mark and associate the question mark with what's questionable. Okay, uh, exclamation point. Wow, her voice is amazing. That's exclamatory. How incredible, exclamatory. What a work of art, exclamatory. But now look at the lower level emotional. Oh, now I see what.
what you mean. Since it's not so exclamatory, use a comma to offset it. Also with the word well. Well, I guess we have to tell them about the error we found. It's not quite as emotional, so well is offset with a comma as well. Okay, now let's look at the next section and identify the hyphen. The uh, hyphen is uh, separate from a dash. A uh, hyphen is only one hyphen uh, to separate, maybe like um, X father in law or something like that. X is always hyphenated from the, uh, the designation that it refers to. So here's some ways that we can use hyphens when we want to form compound words. We've done this before. Compounded adjectives, for example, when they come before the noun that they're referring to, we hyphenate them. We learned that several weeks ago. Uh, and then whenever we uh, put the uh, temporarily hyphenated word after the noun that it refers to, uh, then we remove the hyphen from it if it comes after the noun, unless it's a permanently hyphenated word. One of those permanently hyphenated words is up to date. It didn't used to be, but it is considered to be permanently hyphenated now. So we will hyphenate it before the word it refers to and now after the word it refers to. So her records are, uh, her up to date records were considered. Up to date is hyphenated because it's considered to be a permanently hyphenated word. Or if I said, I believe her records are up to date. Since that's a permanently hyphenated word, we hyphenated on both sides. Um, I didn't mean to second guess. If without the hyphen, we lose the meaning in it. Um, we uh, Emergency room visits can be costly and time consuming. We hyphenate it. It's considered to be permanently hyphenated. How do I know it's permanently hyphenated? Go to my Merriam-Webster dictionary, look it up, and look up the word time and then go down the list and uh, if it's not to be hyphenated it will probably just have a syllabic uh, indication with a little circle like this indicating that's where the word can be divided. But if it's to be uh, permanently hyphenated it will actually be listed in the dictionary with the hyphen. If it's not to be hyphenated, it won't be listed in the dictionary, or if it is, there will be a space between it or a circle to indicate uh, the uh, syllabication. Okay, here's uh, the words X, self, and quasi. Anytime that you have an X or a self or a quasi, those three words always hyphenate them. Here's X governor of California. Here is uh, who exhibits strong self uh, self esteem, uh, a quasi public entity. So all three X self and quasi, whatever they're related to, you must hyphenate them. Now it goes on to say, do not hyphenate most words that begin with prefixes such as anti, by, uh, co, extra, inter, micro, many, multi. Mid, non, over, under, post, pre, re, semi, or un, unless the hyphenated word can be confused with another word. We've already discussed this before. This just provides a greater list than we've ever used in the past. Also use a hyphen when the prefix is added to a word that starts with a capital, like anti-American. So um, it lists the word anti where you should not hyphenate the word, but now it is only because the word that it's associated with is capitalized. It's a proper noun. And in that case, make sure you definitely hyphenate it, uh, because if you don't, it's going to look really funny on a, on a sheet of paper. So here's anti again, but it's not associated with the word that's a proper noun. So anti-counterfeiting agency, co-workers, and uh, who are also co-owners of the business. Notice how co-workers is not hyphenated, but co-owners, these other words that look like co-owners, co owners <laughs> we've tried to pronounce it, it's that co-owners forces us to uh, 
pronounce owners correctly without going back, oh, that meant to be co-owners. So that's why they hyphenated the word co-owners. But co-workers, not hyphenated. Co-owners is hyphenated. Have been rewritten about our multi-use facilities. Notice rewritten and multi-use is not hyphenated. Nonprofit is not hyphenated. Uh, but non-English. See, there is a... Um, uh, a proper noun immediately after that prefix that begins with non, since it's a proper noun, we have to hyphenate it because that letter is capitalized. Yes, sir? What about a word like pre-existence? Pre-existence would not be capitalized. So, but it's, it's the two E's combined. So I know. So would you, would you still put the hyphen or no? Well, do you with cooperate? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. 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 I know. Good question, though, uh, because it challenges you because... Really, whenever I look at the words uh, co-workers and co-owners, that's where it kind of frustrates me a little bit because they seem to be very closely related, but one's hyphenated and one is not. Uh, but if you didn't have to put that in there, it's like cooters, you know? So it's almost misread, but it seems so awkward to have those two words so closely associated to each other, one hyphenated and one not hyphenated. That is very frustrating. That look at this one. Did you ever think the word res resign would be hyphenated? Well, what if you want to re-sign the documents? Then it should be hyphenated, and that's exactly what happened here. When her employment contract expires, Brenda plans to re-sign her contract. Not resign her contract, they re-sign. So the pronunciation is even different with the hyphenated word here. Uh, when writing family titles, hyphenate words that contain X, great, or in law, do not hyphenate words that contain step, half, and grand. Whew, this is confusing, isn't it? So X, quasi, and self is hyphenated, remember that, so X, Y. But grand is not hyphenated. Uh, Mother-in-law is hyphenated, but her great it didn't say grand, great right there. It says grand. But the great aunt, another title or designation for the family, is hyphenated right there. But step is not. Step brother or your half brother is not hyphenated. So I summarized this actually on another sheet of paper. So great grandmother would be? Uh, great, great, and then uh, space, and then grandmother, one word. So not hyphen great grandmother? No, uh-uh. Cope, uh, I guess copredisonin is the word that I've always used. This kind of helps. Uh, over or under copredisonin is what I've been able to use in the past. Pre, dis, re, un, uh, non, co, and con. And then other ones that we just added are these words uh, that should uh, not be hyphenated. Anti, unless it's anti-American, and then that's a proper noun, then you would hyphenate it. Um, and then there, there's my complete list right there. Recover from illness or recover the sofa. Re, uh, resign from my job or resign the contract. Uh, there's the uh, alternatives there. And then use hyphens with X, self, quasi, and in-law, um, but not with grand and half and step. I didn't uh, summarize everything, but almost. Wow, right? With exclamation point. Okay, compounded numbers should be hyphenated um, and spelled out if you do hyphenate them. If it's numbers between 21 and 99. 21 and 99 should always be hyphenated and spelled out as words. Um, then, of course, if you use a regular figure, then you're not going to hyphenate it. Okay, to divide a word over uh, two lines, don't do that. Allow word to divide the words for you automatically. Uh, so we can kind of skip that particular section. Okay, and that brings us to the dash. And uh, do not confuse the hyphen with the dash. The dash is sometimes used in place of a comma, a semicolon, a colon, or parentheses to show greater emphasis. 
So yes, other marks of punctuation generally fine. But the dash shows the greatest emphasis. And if that's what you're trying to achieve, then this is the, uh, the punctuation mark that, that you want to use. Uh, it does go on to say, don't overuse the dash because then it loses its, its effectiveness. Okay, uh, to set off parenthetical elements. Uh, within a sentence, parenthetical elements and depositives. What's in a positive? It renames a, um, a, a noun or a pronoun, or it describes a noun or a pronoun. Uh, it's usually set off by commas, right? Uh, if, however, the parenthetical element or a positive itself contains internal commas, use dashes to offset them. Look what they did right here, or parentheses, either one, one or the other. So this is not an independent clause here. It stands alone, and then here are, is your, your list. For example, Moe's bows, fl uh, fish flops, and uh, BLA Blamtastic were founded by teenagers. So these items in a series are offset with internal commas, so you use dashes to separate that section. Four research assistants, no, that's not an independent clause. So this makes perfect sense to use either a dash or a um, parenthesis. Since we're wanting to emphasize it, we're going to use a dash. Dash, Debbie Venor, comma, Richard Earl, comma, Shama and somebody, comma, Quinlan, and then dash, and then assistance received. There's your subject and there's your verb. End of the year bonuses for outstanding service. If I said four of the following, um, four, consider four of the following research assistants, I would use a colon then, because that's an independent clause. Since that's not an independent clause, and then I have items in a series that's separated with internal commas, I'm going to use a dash or a parenthesis. The dash provides emphasis, and the parentheses de-emphasizes the statement. Okay, if you have a parenthetical statement uh, between um, a subject and a verb, so you can place any parenthetical element between dashes instead of commas. However, remember that doing so emphasizes a parenthetical element. Uh, so it would have been perfectly fine for me to have said all employees, comma, and that includes Ann Patterson, comma, must work overtime this weekend. That would have been fine. But this parenthetical element, I want to emphasize, apparently. Uh, maybe that's trying to push her button a little bit. All employees, and this particular employee, she never listens to what I have to say. And that includes Ann Patterson, must work overtime this weekend. See the emphasis there? It's a button pusher, isn't it? And you can see that the dashes really does emphasize uh, that particular parenthetical element. Okay, use dashes to offset uh, interruptions of the sentence or an afterthought. Uh, we will rebook you on a different flight at no cost to you. I would really just rephrase that and make it sound a little bit better. I could say, we will book you on a different uh, flight if your flight is canceled due to mechanical problems. Uh, we will provide this service at no cost to you, and just make it another sentence even. So they're just wanting to emphasize that with the dashes. Let's meet Friday to discuss your idea. Here's an afterthought. No, let's make it Thursday. You know what? Just retype it and say, uh, let's meet Thursday. <laughs> There's no reason to really put that in a document in the first place. But yes, dashes can be used for afterthoughts or an interruption of thought or to separate uh, uh, a positives or parenthetical elements. Okay, use a dash, not a colon, to separate an introductory list from a summarizing statement. Colons generally introduce lists um, and or an item. And they're usually, when they introduce a list, they're part of a independent clause. And that's why I would use the colon. There is no independent clause here. That's why I'm going to use the dash. Honesty, comma, confidence, comma, optimism. These are the traits of a strong leader, period. 
Facebook comma, Twitter comma, LinkedIn comma, Pinterest dash. These, it's almost telling what these actually represent. Uh, and in the past, remember, a colon would do the same thing if this were an independent clause. Only if that was an independent clause would I use a colon. Since it's not, I'm going to use a dash. Okay, to uh, attribute a quotation. So this is a long quotation, and Steve Jobs has set, mentioned it. So just basically uh, uh, tap or actually hit the uh, align right command on in Microsoft Word. It'll go straight to the right margin. Hit your uh, hyphen key twice to make the M dash, and no spaces, and then just type Steve Jobs, and then enter, and then change it back to align left. And this uh, will actually provide credit for that long quotation. So the dash emphasizes the parenthesis can be used anywhere where you use that dash if you want to de-emphasize it. It's the same rules. Now you can use a parenthesis instead of a dash. How would this be presented on your test? Simple. Uh, it would say, if you want to provide emphasis to this sentence, which punctuation mark would you use? Then you'd use a dash. If you wanted to de-emphasize the parenthetical element in this sentence, which punctuation mark would you use? And then your answer would be the parenthesis. Okay. Um, whenever you set off non-essential uh, elements or non-required elements, uh, figure 17, I can look that up. So this non-essential element is offset by commas. We can also use uh, dashes or parentheses. I would use a dash if I wanted to emphasize the page number, or I would use parentheses if I wanted to de-emphasize the page number. So you can see which of the choices I have to offset this non-essential clause. So it's a, an adjective clause that's describing the, uh, the noun. So I use commas, which is most common. If I wanted to emphasize it, I use dashes on both sides. If I wanted to de-emphasize it, I use Parentheses. Really, if I was going to de-emphasize it, I'd just go ahead and use a commas technically, but that's just me. Explanations, references, and directions are often enclosed in parentheses. Our phase, current hours, 7 to 3, will be extended soon to 6 p.m. Notice how they place all of those inside of parentheses. An apartment developer in San Francisco is uh, building micro units, each unit within an average size of 350 square feet. Uh, what's that? That's uh, 32.8877 square meters in uh, parentheses right there, with some as small as 220 square feet. Well, what's that in meters in parentheses? I put that information there. Our management team. Oh, by the way, see resumes in Appendix A, lowercase, that parenthesis item is not capitalized, it's just enclosed in parentheses, is, the so team is highly skilled. Okay, to show numerals and enclose enumerated items. If you're doing a legal document, a contract, uh, you will spell out the number of days in a legal contract, N-I-N-E-T-Y, and in parentheses put the figure inside of those parentheses. That's only in a legal document, by the way, a contract. Okay, uh, if you're going to repeat something frequently throughout the uh, a document, identify who it is first. Transportation Security Administration. They're the TSA. Now I can refer to TSA without parentheses throughout the rest of the document without repeating uh, Transportation Security Administration again. Uh, then if you have items like A, B, and C, you can enclose those in parentheses or use numbers in parentheses as well. Okay, this one is not for really good business writing, by the way, this particular section. This is almost if you're doing writing for a newscast or NBC, ABC, CBS. 
Uh, think of your favorite newscaster, and they're talking about a local news story. And they may have a little statement that's internalized from the actual statement. It's a question within the statement. And so they punctuated this by placing parentheses around the question. Our task force will be using Google Documents. Have you tried it? That's like, kind of like what a newscaster would use in conveying information to the audience. Not really good business writing, by the way. <clears throat> okay, see Appendix A for a guide to correct documentation. If the material enclosed by parentheses is not embedded in another sentence, use whatever punctuation is required. In sentences involving expressions within parentheses, a comma, semicolon, or colon that would normally occupy the position occupied by the second parentheses is then placed after the parentheses. So when we get the, uh, the project approved for uh, approved, and then you put in parentheses on March 3, since that's an introductory dependent clause, that clause is associated, this information right here on March 3rd is not associated with the comma. That comma is offset, offsetting the introductory dependent clause. So we place the comma outside of it. We can begin installation, period. Uh, this one right here, the semicolon is being used to separate the, uh, this, this independent clause from this independent clause. So semicolon after deadline is really what that's representing. However, comma, if they have an uh, item that's in parentheses, put the semicolon outside of it. Okay, um, double quotation marks. Uh, this is a key on your keyboard. Uh, but if you do have internal quotes within another quote, then use your apostrophe along with your quotation key on your keyboard. So here's a statement with double quotations. You can never be overdressed or overeducated, comma, end quote, said Oscar Wilde. So there's quotes within this particular, that's the actual quote itself and the comma, Commas and periods always appear within the quotation marks. Always. Never an exception to that. Hillary Clinton said that voting is every citizen's most precious uh, right. Uh, this one does not require any uh, type of quotation mark because it's considered to be an indirect quotation. You're just telling what somebody else said. Capitalize only the first word of a direct quotation. Whatever the cost of our libraries, the price is cheap compared to that of an ignorant nation. Do not capitalize the before the word price because it's internal. So the said offsets it. It's a short, um, it's a short quotation. Here's the first part of the quote, and it's comma, end quote. And then said Walter Cronkite comma, and then the quote continues. Since that quote continues, don't capitalize the continuation of the quote. And then the quote goes outside of the period. Okay, single quotation marks are quotes within a quote. Dolores Tomlin remarked comma, quote, in business writing, I totally agree with Aristotle, who said, Okay, so there's the quote, and then another quote, just a hyphen to uh, represent the quotation. A good style must, comma, first of all, comma, be clear, period, and then put the uh, apostrophe to end that quote, and then the double quotes to end the full quote. So for every left apostrophe, you must have a right apostrophe. For every left quote, you must have a right quote. Okay, literary and artistic titles. The main thing, main, the name of a TV show, the name of a magazine, the name of a movie, all of those are considered to be the main. If they're main, italicize them. Anything that's a category uh, within something else is placed in quotes. That's the easiest way to remember that one. 
I'll go ahead and read the statement. Quotation marks are used to enclose the titles of subdivisions of literary and artistic works, such as magazine and newspaper articles, short stories, chapters of books, episodes of television shows, uh, poems, lectures, paintings, sculptures, and songs. However, italics are used to enclose the titles of a complete work, uh, such as the name of books, magazines, pamphlets, movies, television series names, and music albums and newspapers. So here's the uh, example. Here's the name of the magazine, um, the periodical. It's a newspaper. I loved the Wall Street Journal. It's the main. It's italicized. Article. Article within it? Let's put a quote around it. Why does everybody now put everything in quotation marks? Since this is the article name right here, quote and end quote, and by the way, the question is associated with the quote. That's why they put the question mark inside of it. And then we have uh, any little technical cue right there. Everybody now put everything, since we want to emphasize that, and we're already with end quote marks, use just the apostrophe to do that. Okay, here's an episode of the main show. The main show is The Office, which is, uh, is italicized, and the episode is called Diversity Day. It's in quotes. That comma is in the correct location. Periods and commas always, 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 always appear within the quotation marks. Always. It's going to be fun to watch, right? <laughs> um, the boss, played by Steve Carell, managed to offend everyone. Okay, then, oh, oh, look at this. Periods and commas are always, 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 see, I told you, always. Place before closing quotation marks, whether they're single or double. So Kathy, Kathy Barrett remarked, comma, I am impressed that during the meeting our CEO said, individual quote, I take full responsibility for the company's financial records, period, quote, end quote. The article titled, How to Look Smarter, Smarter notice the commas within the quotation, and you can access it online. Semicolons and colons always, 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 yes, semicolons and colons always appear outside of the quotation marks. So here we have our contract stipulated that both parties must accept arbitration as binding. There's a quote, and then we're going to place a semicolon to separate uh, this clause from the next clause. So there's a conjunctive adverb with the semicolon before it, outside of the quotation marks. Space, therefore, comma, space, the decision reached by the arbitrators is final. Okay, three dates have been scheduled for the seminar called, so the name of the seminar is, in quotes, protecting customers' um, identities, end quote. When, when is that? Well, the list is outside the colon, Notice the colon is outside the quotation mark. Commas and periods always go inside the quotes. Semicolons and colons always go outside of the quotes. Question marks and exclamation marks may be either or, inside or outside of the quotation marks. If your quote is where the question or the exclamatory mark is, uh, appears, then it's inside the quotation. If the uh, actual quote itself is not the question or the exclamatory remark, then you place it outside of the quotation mark. So here is the question. Um, Chris Stefanetti asked, have you heard my latest recording? There's the question right there in the quote. So that's why they place the question mark right there. Okay, the next time, here's a quote. The next time we catch you texting during the meeting, Fume the CEO, we will ask you to leave. So the quote itself is the exclamatory remark, and that's why the exclamation point's on the inside of the quote. Now, do you know who it was who said? There's a question. 
This is what they said. You've got to love what you do to really make this happen. Since that's a quote and the question is outside of the quote, put the question mark or the exclamation point outside of the quotation mark. Again, italics is to identify something that's main. Quotations go around things that are subcategories of that main thing. So the patient will see you now. This is a book. Since that's the main name of the book, it's italicized about how smartphones phones are revolutionizing. Healthcare was favorably reviewed in the name of a major uh, newspaper publication called the Wall Street Journal, and so it is italicized. Okay, One Direction, the name of a group, is has no um, other than being capitalized for the name, that's regular text, performed the song. Now this is a song that's from an album, and the album is the main thing. So the album is called Four on Saturday. It's italicized, but the song from the album is in quotes because it's a subcategory of that album. That's why the subcategory is in quotes. And they perform that on Saturday Night Live, which is a main television title. So it's italicized. Kind of tough there, but there are some really good uh, specific rules to follow on those. Uh, jargon. Anytime that you have jargon, um, slang, words used in special sense such as human or, uh, humor or irony, and words following the word stamped, labeled, signed, and marked are usually italicized although some writers enclose those words in the quotation marks. So you can do one or the other. Both techniques are shown here. Online content that is designed to gather as many clicks as possible is often called clickbait. So that jargon that we're using is italicized. Jargon is italicized. My teen teenager said that the film, the major, uh, this is the main thing, so that's why it's italicized, is sick. That's a term that the kid uses, and therefore, since it's not part of the regular vernacular, it's considered to be jargon, so it is in um, italics. Oren claimed he was too ill, but he really wasn't. He claimed he was too ill. Since we're using the word ill as jargon, they italicized it to come to work yesterday. I don't really believe them. Now, if you have uh, a word that's introduced with the words marked or stamped, italicize it was marked confidential. Now, quotation marks are used to enclose specific definitions of words or expressions. Uh, the word or expression being defined is italicized. The word or expression being defined is italicized, and the definition is in quotes. Look what they're doing here. The term crowdfunding, there's the term, it's in italics, but its definition or the reference to what that term means is in quotes. And it still follows the same rule. Um, and the same rule is Periods and commas always go inside of quotes, and uh, semicolons and colons always go outside of quotes. And then if the quoted material, it can, uh, if you have question marks or italics, you could have question marks or, excuse me, not italics, but question marks or exclamation points. It can go either in or outside of quotes, depending on what is being questioned or uh, exclaimed. So the accountants use the term gross margin, terms, crowdfunding, gross margin, both of those are italics. What does it mean? The definition is the difference between um, what it actually costs and the sales revenue. So the definition is in quotes.
Okay, in addition, words under discussion in a sentence and words used as nouns are italicized. Do you think she should have used the phrase in the interest of justice? See, it's a word that they're referring to, and so they italicized it since they're referring to it in her message. Or two of the most frequently misspelled words, what are they? Italicized definitely and accommodate. The word and is not italicized, by the way. Just definitely and accommodate. When to use brackets? If you are um, going from feet to meters, we could have done that earlier in that previous section when it talked about using parentheses. Parentheses would have worked there as well. Uh, but we use brackets in this particular case to offset it. And um, then sick, S-I-C. What the heck is sick? Why would they put that in a quote? The reason is because whoever quoted this material misspelled the word affect. And we're quoting it exactly as they quoted it with that spelling. But we want to make sure that you know that that's misspelled and that they probably didn't intend to misspell it. So I'm still identifying affect, and it should be effect. So in brackets, I put S-I-C uh, to indicate that it should have been spelled differently. Ooh, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, actually, I, that's great. Spelled incorrectly. It does not mean that. In fact, it tells us right above. Uh, within quotations, brackets are used by writers to enclose their own inserted remarks. Such remarks may be corrective, illustrative, or explanatory. Brackets are also used within quotations to enclose the word sick, which means thus or so. The, this Latin form is used to emphasize the fact that an error obvious to all actually appears thus in the quoted material. But spelled incorrectly certainly works for me. Okay, apostrophe. Be careful with the apostrophe. Uh, this goes back to chapter 3, by the way. So if we want to show singular possession, we put apostrophe S, right? And there's exceptions to that. And then if we want to show plural possession, it's S apostrophe, right? Um, nouns should not show the mark of possession. So today's college students, students face many challenges. So um, right there, today we put apostrophe S to make it possessive of today's college students. But students is just plural, so we're not going to put an apostrophe in it. It's just a plural noun, so we just add an S to it to make it plural. Uh, the company's attorneys are evaluating the merger agreement. Here we do want uh, uh, each company, there's two companies there, and all the attorneys are evaluating this. Uh, so there's two companies, so we're changing the Y to I and adding ES and adding the apostrophe to show plural possession. And then attorneys is just, we're not going to make it possessive because it's just a plural noun. We just add S to make it plural. But yes, companies is plural possessive, so we put the mark of possession only on S. So that's just kind of a, a revisit of chapter 3 very quickly to uh, reiterate the use of the apostrophe. Uh, contractions are used for it is, and there are, and they are, as illustrated here, which is perfectly fine. You are invited, you apostrophe R-E. Uh, there is, there apostrophe S. Did not, did in apostrophe T. Those are perfectly fine to use. Um, omitted letters or numbers, that's the 1970s, so that's uh, the apostrophe 70s. Or the class of 2018 looks promising, so that's apostrophe 18. And Dunkin' Donuts. should be Dunking Donuts. But they called it Dunkin' Donuts uh, to make it a little bit more Southern, perhaps. Um, and so they replaced the G with the apostrophe. Okay, uh, in, bus in technical writing, you probably do this, but in business writing, you would spell it out like this, 14 feet by 16 feet. Um, five feet and uh, three... 
five foot and six foot and three inches. You'd spell that out typically. Now your FAQs. Oh goodness, we're running out of time too. Uh, don't use the ampersand unless it's the name of a an organization. Let's see, when do you use versus and how do you abbreviate it? Is I've seen it with VS period and V period. If it's a legal document, it's probably V period. And in business writing, you actually just spell it out and say versus V E R S U S. Uh, if you're talking about verse in the Bible, then it'd be V S period. What is the order of college degrees and which ones are capitalized? Uh, let's see, your uh, degrees are not capitalized, but the abbreviations are. So here's your list of degrees, and associates is apostrophe S, in lowercase, a bachelor's is apostrophe S, in lowercase, and master's is apostrophe S, in lowercase. Uh, the names of your degrees, associate of arts degrees, uh, bachelor of science, master of Arts and Director of Philosophy, uh, Doctor of Philosophy. Now you do capitalize them if they're used as titles. And then what if you use abbreviations, you offset them with punctuation marks, uh, but they don't have internal punctuation, but you capitalize the abbreviations. Okay, does Ms. have to have a period after it? Yes. Should I use it for a woman who is single? Yes. I have a phone extension at work. Should I capitalize the E in extension and abbreviate it? Yes. Um, call me at this number, comma, space, capital E, little XT period, and then the extension number, 2306. Manufacturing, um, let's see, can we, can we uh, abbreviate department, uh, manufacturing, and others? Yes, but if you don't have to, don't. Uh, but department would be DEPT, period. Um, national is NATL. Um, insurance is INS. MFG, period, for manufacturing. And um, merchandise is MDSE. Notice that all abbreviations uh, make up of, may or made up of lowercase uh, letters and end with periods. Where should sick be placed when it's used right next to the word that's wrong? Like they said, call Mona Lisa. They misspelled Mona, so that's sick within brackets. I've looked in the dictionary, but I'm still under sure about whether to hyphenate copilot. Um, the hyphen is no longer used in most words beginning with the prefixes, uh, prefix co, like co-author, co-counsel, uh, co-design, co-feature, co-head, co-pilot, co-star, co-write. Only a few words retain the hyphen, like co-official, otherwise it's coof. Uh, co-owner, cooner, or co-organizer, uh, co-organizer. <laughs> Um, so if you're looking it up in the dictionary, you'll find co-own, meaning to always hyphenate it. That's a permanently hyphenated word. But if it appears like this, then you don't. That's just a syllabication of the word. Uh, an ellipsis at the end of a group, it's three periods. Uh, don't separate them with spaces. If it uh, is a group of words that you've left out at the end of the sentence and it needs a period, then it's three dots and then dot in as a period, as illustrator right there. Should I use complimentary PLI or complimentary PLE to describe free tickets? If they're uh, a gift, G-I-F-T, it's PLI. Complimentary means it goes along with something. It complements it. It matches uh, her purse complimented her outfit because they go along, they go well together. But PLI, use PLI when you're referring specifically to a gift or a complimentary close at the end of the uh, message is PLI as well. 
Alrighty, this concludes chapter 12. We'll look at the review next class period.